Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast this week in America. Great to have you with us. Algebra for the Urban Student offers an algebra textbook for the typical math student. In many cases, such textbooks are written for students who love math and understand the jargon. Teacher and author Kane Lee has incorporated her personal experiences as a high school mathematics teacher into a textbook that is specially geared towards student needs. Built on methods she used successfully in her classroom to motivate her students to a better, more practical understanding of math. Kana has been a teacher since she was 12 years old, started playing piano at age 6, advanced so rapidly she was giving lessons for extra money. In high school, she was a first grade tutor in reading and math tutoring, also in college in math, biology, English, and study skills. Undergrad work at Arkansas State University, graduate work at the University of Central Arkansas. Kana has taught middle school, high school, college, and on the university level. Named Educator of the Year in 2011, also that year founded Educate Academy, selected as the National Association of Professional Women Woman of the Year 2013, uh, 2012 2013 year. Now in the final stages of a professional counseling degree at Liberty University, host along with her brother, the sensational siblings of the radio show Bread of Life, with a passion of helping students become more competent and confident in math. Kana Lee, author of Algebra for the Urban Student, using stories to make algebra fun and easy, back with us on This Week in America. Kana, welcome back to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure. Always great to have you with us. Kana was with us a, a while ago. And you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and watch and listen to the interview. She did, and we'll touch on this book later in the program, Confessions of the Heart. That's available at our website. Uh, today we're talking about algebra for the urban student. This really is a unique book, isn't it? You combine reading, mathematics, technology all in one, and you do it in language that people can understand. What an interesting idea. You would have thought somebody might have yeah. come up with this years <laughs> ago. You were actually in the classroom, and that's what this the whole thing started there, right? When you saw students that were struggling because they just d didn't understand the presentation. Yeah, not at all. Um, I was, uh, at the time when I was in the classroom, I was teaching at uh, Little Rock Central High School, and they were trying to incorporate reading, uh, a literacy program. Um, and one of the first things most math people said, well, I teach math. What, do, what does reading have to do with me? But at that time, it didn't really matter. And so, and I would get the, the students who already struggled with reading, already struggled with school. And so trying to incorporate reading and math was a, was a challenge. But uh, luckily, because I'm strong and writing and math, I was able to incorporate it together and have like a dialogue, have conversation, because textbooks are really for people who who are trained to understand them. They're not really geared for kids. <laughs> they're really not. Well, no, they're not. And as you read through this book, it's like, gee, where was Kana back uh, 100 years ago when I was in school? <laughs> I could have used this. I might have done better yeah. in mathematics had I had it presented this way. When you were in the classroom and you were frustrated, obviously, with the textbooks and you were teaching your way of math, did you see sort of like the light bulb, light bulbs go off in, in some of these students when suddenly something they didn't understand? Now they not only understand, but they're enjoying understanding. Yeah, I find myself telling stories uh, instead of so I just for at, when I was in the classroom, I really just threw the textbook out the window because the kids didn't understand it. Um, their vocabulary and their reading level wasn't high enough to understand the information. And so I started telling stories and my students would say to me, well, Miss Lee, I wish I could take you home and stick you in my pocket when I did my homework. And I would hear that uh, repeatedly. Yes. So then I started what I started to do was, well, maybe if I started to write down these things like the GPS system and so kind of write it down. This is what you do first and you second and you third. And uh, that's kind of how this whole thing kind of kind of got started was students were like, I wish I could take you home with me because by the time I left the class, I forgot everything you said, Ms. Lee. <laughs> so, well, yes, it's sort of now they can take you home, although in written form, probably in their backpack, they probably can't stick it in the pocket, but it's real close <laughs> to taking you home yeah. and having you on call. The book is Algebra for the Urban Student, Using Stories to Make Algebra Fun and Easy. Kena Lee, our guest on the program. Book's available at Amazon. Link onto our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and get information on the book. I just want to go back to your background. As I mentioned, you're like a junior in high school. You're tutoring first graders in reading, which you're strong at, in mathematics, which you're strong at. Talk about the foundation you had. Was it a teacher that turned you on to, to reading and math, or was that something that you just discovered on your own and enjoyed it? 
Well, actually, when I was in school, I struggled with math myself. Um, and uh, and that's hard for a lot of people to believe. But I did struggle with reading and math in elementary school. and in, and But as I got a little older, got into high school, um, able to read a little more. Uh, I remember one time my mom helped me with algebra. My dad was a little older, so algebra wasn't his thing, but he had a solid foundation in the math. My mom helped me with, with algebra, and once I got the hang of it, I just took off with it. I was just able to pick it up once I understand what was going on. And so um, I was able to help my uh, help my uh, my classmates with their homework, help them understand what was going on. Uh, and so when I, if I had a chance to help, I just took advantage of helping. And so it just kind of came natural for me, really. Let's talk a little bit about the book. You, you break things down very simply for people to understand in language that's understandable. Uh, you take a, a significant algebra concept and you, you break it down for the student. Talk about that, how important that is. That's the foundation, and you do it so well. It's like, yeah, I can, I can solve this thing. I can handle this. Yeah. Well, the idea is we, in the classroom, we make assumptions that students understand a concept. But in order to understand a concept, they have to have a foundation or they have to have something they're able to relate to. So I can't start talking about algebra if they don't have a foundation of number senses, being able to count, being able to do basics. And so what I found myself, what I found was a concept, for example, like solving equations is introduced. But if, a, if I found out that students didn't have a foundation in adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing, they didn't have a basic foundation. And so I had to create a situation or a problem that they can relate to, to, to so they can relate the problem the situation to the math problem. And so I had to make math uh, relatable to what yes. to life because most people think, well, what do I need this for? I'll never use this when I, I'm going into science or I'm going into this. I'm never going to solve an equation another time in my life. And that's a common thing that people say because they don't see any need in it. They don't understand it. So I said, well, if I'm going to be in a classroom and I usually had the kids that nobody else wanted, I had the kids that were that struggled tremendously. I said, well, since I have these kids, I need to take an opportunity to make them relatable to their lives. And so I would, I mean, stories and ideas would come to me. We're solving inequality. We're talking about kids going, going to the store. If I have at least this amount of money, what does that mean? And so to give a, I talked about money a lot. Money was a big thing to use to get kids to understand decimals and fractions and, and equations. So I had to use something that was common that most, Everybody likes money. How yes. can you use money uh, to relate to algebra? It can be done. How can you use a newspaper? These are things that I just believe that God just gave me because these are these are not just things that I could just randomly come up with. But these were real life things in real life that you could use to show how math is relatable. And that's what I did with this book. I now, told stories all the time. Well, and it's interesting because you say when we struggle, it's like this is something I'm never going to use anyway. And then you're like 24, 25, something comes up in real life or your work and you're thinking, I wish I would have paid a little more attention <laughs> back in mathematics because I can yeah. actually use that now. You do homework assignments that are there. You present it in such a way I can't wait to do homework assignments. And the real life projects, is that sort of the hook? Because it is relatable. This is not some abstract concept. This is something that's that's relatable to their lives. Well, at the end of the school year, it kind of came to a, a, a screeching halt, and then I had like a month left for school. Well, I wasn't I wasn't a teacher that let the kids watch videos and play and do all of that. That's just a waste of time. How can I use this time constructively? And so what I decided to do was. How can I take all the concepts we talked about all year and put into a project, put into a real life everyday application? And that's what we find at the, I did one for algebra and also one for geometry. Um, and so I try to look at, look at a newspaper. Kids don't read a newspaper, but <laughs> how can I get kids yes. to be interested in numbers, in the stock market? And so what I did was that I used a newspaper, or I used, uh, primarily a newspaper, and, and I used uh, sales ads. Everybody wants to look through the sales ads on Sundays and see what's on sale. And so I used things that you, we already use, but to teach a math concept with it for kids to be, I wanted them uh, to appreciate math. I wanted them to appreciate it, not only just tolerate it, because, oh, I hate math. I, I've heard that my whole career. I can't stand math, probably because you had a teacher who didn't know what they were doing, and they couldn't explain the concepts to you. It's why you didn't understand it. And I said, well, I'm going to put to death all of those misconceptions about math and help you to understand it, because when you understand it, you can do it, and then you'll like it. 
Um, what, and that's the same with the project. With us on the program, Kana Lee, that's C-A-N-A-A Lee, L-E-E. The book is Algebra for the Urban Student, Using Stories to Make Algebra Fun and Easy. Book available at Amazon. Involved as I'm, I'm reading the bio, in January of 2012, you became an associate time to teach trainer and presenter. One of the things you worked on was was common sense in the classroom. Again, that's something that seems to make sense, but it's so obvious, I don't think we, we actually get it sometimes. And the extension of that is when the students are more focused, you have fewer disciplinary problems. Talk about that aspect of it, because there is a correlation there, isn't there? There's a, a, a absolutely. Uh, actually, the first week of school is the most important week, because that is the week that you have to lay down your expectations as a teacher. Uh, and I always took the week, regardless what every other teacher. For example, a teacher who goes to school the first week and they started with math half, 10 times more discipline problems versus the teacher who goes in and builds rapport with their students, lay down, talk about foundation, discipline, and consequences. They have a lot less discipline problems because they took the time up front to build a relationship. And that was one of the things I did with Time to Teach. Why is it important to have consequences, not just not just threaten a student with, well, if you keep doing this, I'm going to do this and not do it. That doesn't work. You actually, if you say something, you actually have to carry out to in order for your students to respect you. And so Time to Teach was, uh, that was also, in order to increase effectiveness in the classroom, you have to establish discipline up front. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. You did a follow-up book, which I love the title, Algebra Easy as Pie. Talk about that because you break uh, another concept down where it's manageable, understandable, and it's enjoyable. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to get that one published as of yet. But what I did was, um, and this book is more extensive, and so I have, there's one chapter that I took, and this one actually has a... um, a very extensive, uh, like a key at the end of it. But, uh, and, and this one has more stories. It's more interactive. Um, it covers probably all of Algebra 1 and, and some of Algebra 2 as well. Um, I said, but I, I just had so much. I just told so many stories. As a matter of fact, one year, I rewrote the whole curriculum. I threw the whole thing out the window, <laughs> and I wrote it from scratch. That takes a tremendous amount of work, but it's just to show you that our kids are valuable and our kids are important, and we have to do what's necessary to help our kids to achieve. Because if they don't achieve something in school, they're going to go out into the world, and and they're lost, they don't have any direction, and what they do is become delinquents because we didn't take time to pour into them when they were in school, and they were there to learn and to grow. And you've dedicated your life to that. If there was a mantra that would probably sum you up, it's that, yeah, you are there to allow these children to achieve their full potential. You orchestrated the establishment of Project Edge. Uh, We've got a few minutes left in the program, but this is so important. Uh, Talk about that, the concept of it, and the the implementation, and again, seeing the changes in the the kids. Yeah, Project Edge um, was a program for minority students to help them um, excel in school and academics other than sports and entertainment. Uh, African-American students focus, have they put all their focus on sports and entertainment, not putting their focus on education. And so this was a custom made program to help them excel in school because they struggle so much from the time they enter kindergarten, from K through 12, it's just their whole educational um, experience is a big struggle. And so this program was designed to help them uh, excel in school so they can have other options other than sports and entertainment. The book we're talking about specifically is Algebra for the Urban Student, Using Stories to Make Algebra Fun and Easy by Kane Lee. The book's available at Amazon. Link on directly to information on the book by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A couple minutes left in the program. I mentioned that uh, Kane has been with us before talking her book uh, about her book, Confessions of the Heart. Let's go back very briefly to 2013. Your life really changed at that point, didn't it? It completely changed. A total 180 in in 2013 uh, is when I surrendered my life to Christ. And so even though math, uh, music and math were my first passion, my first passion and first love, but when I surrendered my life to Christ, I actually gave up the thing I loved the most, which was teaching, and went a totally different direction. Um, and so you have to, Confessions of the Heart is a testimony of my life, how, how I was before I was a Christian, how, before as an unbeliever, and how I am as a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. And so you can see two different dynamics of my life. 
one as a passionate teacher and one as a passionate follower of Christ. And as a follower, you are still teaching because you are sharing your story, real world experiences in yes. the book, Confessions of the Heart. Talk about October 2015, because you really felt at that time you were called to to take some of your experiences, write them down, offer them to other people to to help them get through similar circumstances in life. That was that was key. That's who you are today, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it, from the two, 2013 to 2015, I just had this pull. I just had uh, in my heart. I just I felt this burning desire to share my life. Something I never felt the desire to do before. But now, because I really felt that I was set free, I really embraced forgiveness. One of the things the Lord birthed in my heart was forgiveness, where I wanted to forgive. Nobody wakes up and say, hey, I want to forgive everybody for the wrong they've done to me. But that's how I knew that it wasn't me. And there was something amazing, something supernatural was doing a work in me. And so I wanted to forgive everyone, every boyfriend I ever dated, my mom, my dad, everybody. And I started writing these letters and I wanted to share with people because I wanted people to see and know that this is real, which this is more important than teaching math. That was a season in my life that I needed, but this season is even more important than algebra for the urban student. Yes, because when you're, you're talking about algebra, that's a slice of life, a bigger slice than I think we give a credit for because we're talking about the everyday application of mathematics in our lives. But you're talking about the whole life, the whole person, the whole being, yes. aren't you, in, in your latest book, Confessions of the Heart? Yes, it is. Many times believers, you know, they only focus, they only want to talk about where they are now, but they never go back and show people how messed up they were, how broken, how confused, how upset, how frustrated they were with life. That's the most important part for people to understand that I can relate to you because I know how it feels. There has to be more than life to working and paying bills. And I got to a point where I said there has to be more to life than me being a teacher. There has to be more. And now I know there is a whole lot more. And so there are many people who go to work every day and don't believe in God for that simple fact. They just think they're supposed to eat, sleep and die. And I thought that at one time. I don't think that anymore until that is revealed to you. Uh, to a, a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ until you actually have that, until God is revealed to you, life really doesn't make sense. That book is Confessions of the Heart. Once again, you'll find that at Amazon link on by going to our website this week in America. And while there, you can watch and listen to the program we did a few weeks ago with Kena in, in talking about that book. I got about a minute left here. The book we're specifically talking about algebra for the urban student using stories to make algebra fun and easy. What was the reaction of the educational community when you published this book? And they're thinking, wait a minute, what's she doing? She's making this understandable. <laughs> I just... Well, I didn't, get, I didn't quite get the feedback that I would have expected. Um, and so now it's, it's been several years since I've written the book. And so now it's being republished and relaunched again to people so they can actually see it. Um, people didn't really get a chance to see it. But my students, it is kid tested and mother approved. The parents and the kids loved it. And that's what's, that's what's most important, that the kids loved it and the parents. And so that's why it's so important for it, for it to get pushed again out there so people can, so kids can actually love and appreciate math again. It's the first book that infuses reading, mathematics, and technology all in one, reader-friendly, written in language that anyone can understand. The book is Algebra for the Urban Student, using stories to make algebra fun and easy. Kana Lee is the author and our guest on the program. The book's available at Amazon.com. And, of course, you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Kana, it is always a pleasure. I love what you're doing in the two books, touching people in different ways, but touching yeah. people. Thank you so much for being with us on the program once again. It's been a pleasure, Rick. I look forward to another chance for us to get together and talk. Look forward to that. We'll talk about algebra easy as pie on the program the next time because I can learn <laughs> something. I love learning something in the process here. When I have you on, I always do that. The book is Algebra for the Urban Student, Using Stories to Make Algebra Fun and Easy. Kana Lee, the author and our guest. Information, of course, by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. 